Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, anybody make any New Year's resolutions? Yes. Well, <laughs> if your New Year's resolution involved never having to spend another holiday with your spouse, I could have a <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, folks, uh, divorce is complicated. And if you own a business and you're getting divorced, it's even more complicated. And what makes it even more complicated than that is there's 41,168 lawyers in the state of New Jersey. So, that's right. And I birthed one of them, too. Um, so, who do you pick? How do you know who's a good lawyer if you are considering divorce or uh, you own a business and you're considering divorce? And one way you, you can do that uh, is to figure out if they have a specialty in matrimonial law because New Jersey certifies specific attorneys that have that specialty. And if they have that specialty, uh, yeah, there we go, they have that little seal somewhere on their website that says that they're certified by the New Jersey Supreme Court. So that's how you know you have an expert in family law. Just so happens, um, where's my slide? There it is. Uh, I'm one of, those, one of those lawyers, and there's only 150 of them in the state of New Jersey out of the 41,000 that have that specialty certification in family law. So if you have anything at stake in your marriage, you're thinking about getting divorced, Make sure you go see one of those 150. Don't go see one of the 41,000, okay? So that's enough about me. Uh, I wanna to talk to you today about how to protect your business in a divorce. But before we can do that, we have to understand whether your business is what we call marital property. What is marital property? Well, it's anything that you acquired during your marriage, from the date that you got married to the date somebody files a complaint for divorce. Whatever was accumulated in that time period, it doesn't matter who owned the stuff. It doesn't matter if your name's on it, their name's on it, or it's in their joint names. If it was accumulated in that time period, it's considered marital property, and that makes it uh, in fair play for the divorce. Now, what about your business? If you, accumulate, if you started a business before the marriage, chances are it's gonna be what we call exempt from equitable distribution, and you won't have to worry too much. Uh, businesses obviously started and, and run in that time period during the marriage are fair game and are going to be considered marital property and divisible in the divorce in some way. But the tricky part comes with those people that start the businesses before they get married and then they let their spouse work in the business and the spouse contributes to the appreciation and value of the business. And when that happens, that spouse then has a great argument for I should get a piece of that pie even though it's not my business and I don't own the business. Which brings me to my first strategy for you, which is fire your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> because the greater your spouse's involvement in a business that you own increases their argument that they, they contributed to the appreciation and value of that asset. So if you're thinking about divorce and you want to do a little divorce planning, it's fire them. <laughs> The second strategy for you is sign a prenup. So this is before you get married, obviously. You don't want to do, it's, it's harder to do after you get married. It's possible, it's not, it's not the easiest thing to do after you get married. So if you're thinking about getting married and you own a business, the easy way to protect yourself is to sign a premarital agreement. That makes it yours. All the appreciation of value will be yours and yours alone. And your spouse will waive any interest that they have in that asset. The third strategy I have for you is to report your real income. Now this sounds counterintuitive, but business owners who fail to report their income to artificially suppress the value of their business are getting themselves into a whole peck of trouble. And it's called tax fraud, and it's a crime. And if a judge finds out that you are not reporting your real income, they have a duty and an obligation to, take, to, to report you to the IRS. So anybody that I represent in that situation basically can't go to a judge because they would be subject to exposure to the IRS. Mm -hmm. So report your real income. So if you're thinking, you could do some planning, start thinking about that, and start reporting what you really make. The fourth strategy I have for you today is to keep the fi family finances separate. This is another way people artificially suppress their income is they don't take a, a wage, a fair wage. They pay everything through the business. Your spouse is gonna know that's what you're doing and you're gonna see that you only make $30,000 on, on your tax return but you live in an $800,000 house and you go to Cancun every year and you're just gonna be in trouble because 
they're going to want to figure out what your real income is, and then you're going to have to get forensic accounts involved, and it's a big bloody mess. So start reporting your real income and keep your family finances separate. Pay your personal expenses from your personal bank account. The fifth strategy I have for you today is a little cross-selling for my life insurance friends out there, Kim Luthi and anybody else who sells life insurance. If you own a business, and maybe you're not even considering divorce, buy yourself, the business can buy a cash value life insurance policy, it builds cash value, and then if there is a problem in your marriage, you can use those resources to buy out your spouse instead of having to self-fund a buyout or to offset other assets. So it's just another way to, to kind of protect yourself. So remember, if you want to be free <laughs> of your unhappy marriage, and you own a business, don't go see one of these 41,000 lawyers if you're considering divorce. Make sure that you see one of the 150 matrimonial attorneys that are certified by the New Jersey Supreme Court. Hopefully that one is me, and I'd be happy to assist you. Please check out my website. There's a lot of uh, free information there for you. I also wrote a book you can download that's also for free, uh, A Divorce Guide. And I thank you for your time today.